Dr. Bushraj, and a good morning to you on the forum. Yeah, a um, bit of a different request I got uh, yesterday, I received yesterday, um, concerning these buffalo horns, and to put a marula fruit next to it to compare the size. Um, that, that's what the request was about. And chat a little bit about the, the buffalo horns. I think you guys knew that before my time here, you knew this buffalo that used to frequent this area. Um, died of, of a disease. Um, I looked it up in the book it's, it's, um, that attacks um, <coughs> the, the mucous membranes of the nose and the ears, which results in excretion um, from, from the nose and the ears, I believe. So I'll find out a bit more about the disease and put that up on the site um, tonight or tomorrow, tomorrow. Right, firstly, I have with me the marula fruit, <laughs> but yay big. Um, yeah, all around brilliant fruit. Lots of animals eat it. Um, birds, your loons, your vervet monkeys, um, giraffes, elephants go nuts over this stuff. Love this fruit. And um, let's not forget about Milo, our resident canid. Loves these things as well when his tennis balls uh, eat them through and everything. The, the marula comes next. And I'll pick up the buffalo the horns. Now it's quite a big, big set of horns. There we go. Um, up to about 870 kilograms, adult male buffalo. Maybe a bit heavier. Um, so it's a formidable beast. It's not like your cattle. It's a bit of a misconception. It's nothing like cattle. These African buffalo are serious, serious animals. Um, not, to, not to mess around with at all. Especially your old bull. Um, we call them dugger boys around here. That's because that's they're often in the mud. They're coated in mud, which is what uh, dugger cement is made out of. Um, maybe 10, 10 of them together. And those are the ones you've got to watch out for, especially on your walk. If you come across these guys on your walk, um, yeah, <laughs> you've got a lot of problems. The breeding herds are a bit more relaxed. Um, they, they're pretty safe in numbers, but it's these older guys that are very temperamental and very dangerous. Yeah, we've managed to find a few other horns around the lodge as well. Got some impala horns. Impala. I think there's a recorded jump of about 14 meters in length. So these guys are very frisky. Um, obviously seen lots of them around the camp. Lots of those babies still left around. Unfortunately, yeah, with the Wilderbeers, um, I was going to put it on the forum, but with the count with them now, is we've got four youngsters left. Um, so having quite a tough time, yeah. But I suppose that's, that's what it's like here in the real bush, in real Africa. <laughs> um, we started off with about 11, I believe. And um, springbok horns. Now, we don't have any of these antelope around here. They're more in the drier parts in Peru, in South Africa. Um, also beautiful antelope. We used to have um, stuck millions of them in Africa. They actually lost, they were all hunted out. Um, when the colonials came down here, they were hunted for sport. Um, we used to have the same, same amount of them as the migration of wildebeest up north. The greater Peru was in 1910, I believe. That's when the last mi <coughs> migration was done with them. And it measured 120 kilometers in length. All you saw was springbok for 120 kilometers. So that must have been an amazing sight to see that. And what's, what's unique with springbok today is they've got this pronk. They do a pronk, which is about a three meter height jump, with their backs arched, their legs straight out, and beautiful to watch. Absolutely stunning. I mean, we watch, you see 10 of them doing it now, 15 of them, and 